A riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma, Vince McMahon is one of the absolute strangest men in the world. He's a ludicrously wealthy man who spent years getting beaten up and embarrassed on television when he really didn't have to. He's someone that rules with an iron fist and can be one of the most tyrannical of bosses, but will also go out of his way to comfort and provide for those who are perhaps down on their luck. He is a visionary, the man that changed the wrestling, sorry, sports entertainment business forever, but is someone who, according to some, feels ashamed to be associated with the thing that made him his fortune in the first place. The outlandish Mr. McMahon character we've seen on television is apparently the real life Vince dialed down to about a 6 or 7. Because if the stories we've been told are even partly true, the real Vince wouldn't be allowed anywhere near a rolling camera. From fighting his wrestlers to almost killing his writers and beyond, there have been many outrageous Vince McMahon stories shared over the years which paint an acid-drenched picture of the one-of-a-kind WWE CEO. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com and these are the 10 craziest Vince McMahon stories. Join us. Number 10. Vince's Multitude of Personal Quirks before we crack on with some specific examples, I felt it was appropriate to dedicate an entry to Vince's overall odd behavior and personal quirks. Vince McMahon is, as we all know, the most fascinating human being on planet Earth, and it would likely take a small army of top psychologists to even get close to figuring him out. I mean, really, what do you say about a guy who resents the existence of sneezing? Who sees the involuntary bodily act as a sign of weakness and is angry at himself when he accidentally lets one slip? Well, the answer is a man who not only hates sneezing, but also hates sleeping, who gets by on about two hours worth before putting in a 22-hour shift full of business meetings, television tapings, and high-intensity workouts. A man who not only hates sneezing and sleeping, but also refuses to grow facial hair, despite having the ability to grow a world-class beard, because as he once told Paul Heyman, I can't let it win. Yes, Vince is a lunatic and apparently has issues with a lot of things. But apparently he loves snow cones, as everyone who attended WWE snow cone themed Christmas party one year, weird, found out when he downed a bunch of them and then professed his love for the frozen treat in highly excited tones. Number 9. Vince is the world's strongest billionaire one of the great things about Vince McMahon is that even as he approaches 80, he still has a physique that would make men half his age, including some of the WWE roster, jealous. I'm sure access to all that unsold Ico Pro has something to do with it. A workout fanatic, WWE's chairman has been known to hit the weight room at Titan Towers in the late hours of the evening and sometimes in the wee hours of the morning. A feisty competitor, Vince will try to match or outwork people in the gym, even if he's clanging and banging with his Herculean son-in-law or the actual world's strongest man. Mark Henry relayed a story of Vince inviting him to pump some iron, only for McMahon to show up about an hour into the workout as Henry was beginning to tire. Still, sexual chocolate had some years on Vince and the two continued the workout, with Vince keeping up with Henry for weight and reps before the former Olympic powerlifter tapped out, prompting much taunting from the boss. McMahon must have been happy with himself at the time, but the next day he called Henry to admit that he had made a terrible mistake as his body screamed in agony. Welcome to the Hall of Pain, Vince. Number 8. Vince forgets which wrestlers he employs WWE is a big company, right? The Walmart of wrestling employs hundreds of people, from wrestlers and production folk to lawyers and seamstresses and lord knows what else. Though Vince will often have a say in the hirings and firings, it's not like he's the one doing them all, as that can often be the responsibility of department heads, or dickheads. And with such an insane schedule, stress and responsibilities, Vince can be forgiven for perhaps being a tad forgetful from time to time. Still, it is a little surprising that Vince forgot that Jimmy Yang wasn't under contract when he turned up to see friends at the Backlash 2006 pay-per-view. Yang was milling about backstage when Vince asked where he'd been. Yang, somewhat confused, went about his day and continued to enjoy catering before agent Michael Hayes approached him and asked if he could do something on that night's show. The Freebird questioned Vince on whether he really wanted to use someone not under contract, to which the boss replied that he should be under contract. Jimmy Wang Yang debuted just a few months later. On another occasion, Vince supposedly walked past wrestler Casey James in the hallway, remarking that he liked his look and wanted to sign him. James was, naturally, already under contract and had actually performed on a WWE pay-per-view earlier that year. 
Number 7. Vince fights Kurt Angle and Kofi Kingston a super tough street fighter at heart, Vince always wanted to be a wrestler himself but was discouraged against it by his father, Vince Sr. It's no surprise then that someone as competitive and combustible as Vince would get into the occasional scrap, even if it's with his own employees or independent contractors if you will. Vince has got into it with a few of his wrestlers over the years, but two of the most famous instances of Vince tapping into his inner grappler were when he threw down with Kurt Angle and Kofi Kingston. With Kurt, Vince tried to take him down constantly during a transatlantic flight, the two eventually spilling to the floor where they awoke a sleeping Undertaker. The dead man, assuming the gold medalist was trying to stretch the boss for real, promptly began choking his in-ring rival out before Vince clarified the situation. Against Kofi, Vince had made a snide remark about Kingston not being over, which led to a drunk Chris Jericho convincing the New Day member that he needed to fight Vince in order to stand up for himself and thus gain McMahon's respect. Kofi challenged Vince, who promptly double-legged him, and the two rolled around before making nice. Ah. Number 6. Vince McMahon doesn't know what a burrito is It's often been said that Vince McMahon lives in his own bubble. Running a publicly traded billion dollar company might afford him smart suits, fancy homes, and a luxury yacht named Lest We Ever Forget The Sexy Bitch, but it doesn't leave him with much free time and, as a result, he's not likely to know what movie's number one at the box office or who's top of the pop charts. Being in such a bubble also means, according to former WWE writer Dan Madigan, is that Vince doesn't know what a burrito is. This revelation came to light when the head honcho was being pitched an award-worthy storyline where Big Show would eat a poisoned burrito and become sick. Vince balked at the idea because he didn't know what a goddamn burrito was, pal, and didn't think the audience would either, leaving the writer's room, all of whom were fully functioning, comparatively normal people, dumbfounded. The kicker? Every day at noon, Vince's secretary would bring to his office, you guessed it, a steak burrito. Come on, Vinny, mate, it's really not hard. Just go and look at the dictionary if you don't know what something is. Here, I'll do it for you. Burrito, noun, a small donkey, particularly one used as a pack animal in southwestern United States. Oh, wait, sorry, that's burro. Oh, for fu- Anyway, enjoy your steak wrap, chief. Number five, Vince suffers a heart attack. Vince doesn't make it a habit to party with the boys, but it seems like when he does, it's usually an occasion to remember. After the This Tuesday in Texas pay-per-view, McMahon decided to let loose and accompany his crew to a local strip club, showing up at around midnight with an appetite for alcohol and scantily clad ladies. Vincent had a rough year with a federal investigation into alleged steroid use in the company and top star Hulk Hogan, who had been implicated in the investigation, wanting time off to go and play actor. Flanked by confidants Pat Patterson and Sergeant Slaughter, Vince was already inebriated when he entered the club for one last hurrah before the new drug testing policy came into effect. Already there and enjoying the entertainment were the likes of Kurt Hennig, the Road Warriors, Bret and Owen Hart, Jim Neidhart, the Rockers, the Big Boss Man, and others. One thing led to another, and one drink led to another five, and somehow Vince ended up taking a very safe version of the Doomsday device with the Hulkster and Brutus beefcake there to securely catch him. Unimpressed with such a 4 out of 10 maneuver, the hitman and the anvil hoisted Vince up and leathered him with a full force heart attack onto the sticky floor. A pissed up Vince laughed it off and shared an adult beverage with Brett before the cops were called. Number 4. Vince nearly kills a writer in a street race it's fair to say that being a writer for WWE can be a hazardous vocation, with WWE's owner being one of those most likely to chew out a scribe for using the word belt instead of championship, or, I don't know, suggesting that Brock Lesnar lose a match or something. So when Vince's competitive streak and propensity for torturing writers collides, it's never going to end well, is it? Former WWE writer and MLW founder Court Bauer found that out the hard way when the chairman challenged him to a drag race on an open highway. Vince, who was probably more used to being chauffeur-driven in a limo, randomly asked Bauer to put his Mercedes up against Vince's Bentley on the drive home after work. Bauer was initially able to get ahead of Vince, much to his surprise, but it wasn't long, however, before Vince would come back and attempt to win the race or die trying. Or win the race by killing the writer. Either way. Vince gathered speed and, while the two cars were neck and neck, attempted to force his foe into some road construction works that were ongoing. Court thankfully slammed on the brakes and Vince sped away, having won the race. Jason Statham's got nothing on the genetic jackhammer. 
Number three, Vince wears poopy pants on live TV. We've seen a lot of Vince McMahon's ass on television over the years. Some might say too much, but those people quite clearly don't know the first thing about wrestling. Vince just loves getting his billionaire buns out, whether he's inviting people to join a very exclusive club or just, you know, dropping trowel for a laugh. There was, however, one time the WWE production people were advised not to shoot the Mac Daddy's posterior because he had sharted in his pants right before delivering a promo on Raw. The story goes that Vince was waiting in the gorilla position, ready to go out to the ring and wanted to let off an aroma in the vicinity of Gerald Briscoe, who has a notoriously weak stomach, but tried so hard that he accidentally crapped himself. With no time to change, the boss went to the ring and performed as planned, all while sporting a visible and unmistakable skid mark. What a pro. Of course, when he got backstage, he took the pants off and chased after Briscoe because he was determined to make the stooge vomit. Vince was reportedly upset at Jim Ross for relaying the tale many years later in a radio interview, but for Dr. Heine alone, I think good old JR should have gotten a pass for that one. Number two, Vince has the coach arrested as a rib. One thing that crops up time and time again is that Vince loves to rib people. Whether it's pushing them fully clothed into a nearby swimming pool or throwing hard candies at them while they try to sleep on a long flight, the WWE CEO is evidently a bit of a kid when it comes to practical jokes. He was also behind one of the best ribs in WWE history as he, Bruce Pritchard and Jerry Briscoe got together to play a prank on Jonathan Coachman. The coach was pretend arrested for running a backstage football betting pool by two cops who were in on the act. Cuffed and taken into Vince's backstage office as he was going over plans for that night's SmackDown taping, the CEO went off on his employee, giving him a dressing down and ordering the police to take him away. So coach did a perp walk and got into a squad car, being driven a mile down the road before being brought back to the arena where the entire crew were waiting, laughing their heads off. The announcer, who was contemplating how to tell his dad he had lost his dream job over a low-stakes betting pool, walked to a quiet part of the arena and cried for 10 minutes. Number 1. Vince proposes himself as storyline father of Stephanie's baby One of Vince's great masterstrokes was transplanting himself from behind the announce desk to inside the ring in the late 90s. As the villainous Mr. McMahon, Vince was one of the best characters on the show and was always a highlight, whether attempting to thwart Stone Cold Steve Austin or fighting with his own flesh and blood. Shane, Stephanie, and even Linda have found themselves in the squared circle with the patriarch as the family feud continued to escalate throughout the years. Whether he was putting his comatose wife into a nursing home while making out with Trish Stratus, or trying to choke the life out of his only daughter, Vince was seemingly game for anything as far as his nearest and dearest were concerned. One storyline that was pitched and mercifully shot down, however, would have taken things about 50 steps too far. When Stephanie McMahon was pregnant with her first child, Vince suggested that he should claim on screen that he was, in fact, the father. Stephanie, still a resident on planet Earth, turned the angle down on the spot, questioning how anyone could possibly find entertainment in such an idea. Failing to properly read the room, Vince then suggested Steph's brother instead, before that was Julie Kaboshta's as well. Thank the Lord.